Praise the Lord. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, Lord, here I am. I thank you, Lord, that, that you choose me to come up and serve you. Lord, without you, nothing's going to happen. If you don't anoint this, Lord, they're all going to go home real sad. But I know that you promised that if I would come, that you would anoint it, Lord. So I thank you for the anointing and, and everything you're going to do this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Good morning, precious people of the Lord. Hey, you're his possession. That's what I heard. Heard you're his possession. And, and you're the most precious thing he wants. More than everything he made, you're the ones. Isn't that neat? The saints of God. Praise God. Let's take a look at our uh, our word for today. It's in Ephesians. It's going to be Ephesians one thirteen. Last week I heard this song. You know, you have to realize something here. Um, I went to a Catholic church, and there are hymns I have never heard. I hear hymns and I cry. You know, I knew all these Catholic songs didn't do anything. And somebody would sing some hymn, and I would get in my heart, and I'd say, wow, this is so powerful. And somebody say, geez, that's a hundred years old. You never heard that? I said, no, I never have. That's the first time I've heard it. And it was anointed then, and it's anointed now, and, and it makes me want to cry, and I get all excited, and in fact, for the longest time, uh, my youngest son, we would hear a song, you know, and we'd get all excited and we'd be singing it all week. And then pretty soon we got smart. We'd say, why wait till second service to see what they're going to sing? Mom would be making breakfast. We'd jump in our car and shoot over to first service and we'd listen to the songs and we'd get them in our head. We'd go back, eat breakfast, sing them all, come back over and join everybody. And it was like everything was happening. It was really kind of neat. And I miss those times because we used to do it pretty regularly. For quite a while we did that. And then, uh, and then one day, I guess we stopped doing that and didn't realize it. But we had so much zeal and excitement to want to hear God's word that, that the songs were ministering to us before we could even hear the message. <laughs> Praise God. Huh? Let's take a look where we're at. Ephesians one thirteen. In Him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in Him. With the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge to our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possessions, to the praise of his glory. For this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, which exists among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for while you were mentioned, excuse me, while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God Excuse me, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and a revelation in the knowledge of Him. Praise God, those are my script, those are my verses. That's going to be exciting. Uh, I was supposed to speak last week. So I know what Doug had to say was so important because God said, wait. And, and I was praying and they said, you're next on the schedule. And I said, Lord, am I next on the schedule? And He wouldn't answer me. <laughs> he usually says, you're going to go up. And I go, well, I get all excited. And I, I asked him, I said, Lord, I haven't heard from you. you know, I got all these things that, you know, I, that I see every day. Every day I read my Bible and things jump out at me. And I write them down. And then pretty soon, God puts you, one of you, on my heart. And then He shows me, that's the Scripture you're supposed to go to that person. And I write to you and I say, look what God said. And some people will be confused. They'll say, wow. Some will come and say, wow. And I, I get letters back saying, wow, how did you know? Other times I get, I get somebody say, I don't know what to do with the Scripture. And I said, hang on to it. God might send somebody your way and you're going to have His Word right on your hand. But I just know that God calls me to do that. So I get all excited. And uh, as the Scriptures jump out at me, I get all excited. And last week was coming up and, and God wasn't saying anything to me. And I thought, wow. You know, you know, if He stops talking to me, I'm totally worthless to you. <laughs> I want to bring what He says. You don't want to hear me talk. You want to know what he wants you to know. That's what I want to know. And so when it didn't happen, I thought I got kind of concerned. I thought, well, God will take care of it. And then Ron came to me and said, you're not going to speak this week. You're going to speak next week. It was kind of like I already knew that. So I came expecting. I said, because, because God said Doug was going to speak next week. 
and he and he interrupted the course of what was supposed to happen, I knew something special was going to happen. So I heard and I listened, and he and he spoke about about you know loving your wives, and and, and it was really neat. And so I know that that was supposed to be said, boy. And if you didn't pick up on that, you better get the tape because you're going to miss something. There were some seeds planted last week that are supposed to grow all this whole year with you and your spouse and your wife. And if you didn't get them, boy, get the tape. Or stop Doug in the hallway and say, I demand to know what you said last week. (laughs) Because I don't want to miss anything. Last week when I was sitting back over there, I heard a song that says, How priceless, how precious is your unfailing love. Precious. (laughs) Precious. <laughs> First one, I think physically precious. What's precious? You know what's precious? My youngest son being real small, you know, just, a, you know, I don't know, maybe six, seven years. I don't know how old. You want to turn on the cooler like everybody else. You go down the hallway and you reach, you know, click. The cooler goes on. Well, he's, you know, he's down here. And he was watching everybody do it. And he wanted to do it, too. He wanted to serve. He had a desire and a zeal to, to be involved. You know, he, you know, when your kids are real small, they want to do everything you do. That's why it's so important to serve God and pray in front of Him and get on your knees and cry and laugh and, and build them up and love your wife and kiss your wife in front of your kids so they can see that. Because they're learning, they're watching. They say, oh, those are neat things. You know what's precious? He wants to turn on the cooler. So he pulls out his wallet. I don't think he has any money in it, but you know, I had a wallet, so he bought a wallet. Probably begged somebody to give it to him or whatever. Maybe I give him one of my old wallets. I don't remember. All I know is he said, Watch this, Dad, I'm gonna turn on the cooler. I go, It's okay. It's okay. No, no, watch watch. I figured it out, I can do it. I said, Okay. He took out his wallet and he throws it up and misses the switch and he throws it up and he throw, he's just sitting there and I'm thinking, Well, I got a lot of things to do, you know. And uh, he's throwing it up, throwing, all of a sudden, boom, he hits the switch, the cooler goes on, and he smiles at me and says, What do you think? That's, that's precious. Huh? That's precious. He wanted to turn on the cooler. And then after a while, he wanted to serve God because I serve God. Then he wanted to pray because I prayed. And, and then he wanted to hear God because I hear God. And pretty soon he became a grown-up with other things in his mind. But those are precious times. There's a word right here. You're given a certain amount of time with your kids. Just a certain amount. They're like this, then they're like that. Don't you miss those times. I don't care what you're doing. This is from the Lord. I don't care what you're doing. You make time for them because soon they'll be grown and, 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 you, and that chance will be gone. If I was so busy that I had to go work on something and I'd have missed that, I, you know, my, my wife reminded me that not very long ago. I was thinking, you know, boy, it sure is hot. She said, I remember when Scott used to try to turn on the cooler. We're all sweating. He's over there throwing his wallet. <laughs> You know, walk over and go, click, get lost. But that's not what God said to do. I think that's precious. My daughter, when I have a handicapped daughter, and she's really pretty, and, and uh, you know, we had all these plans. We're going to have a little girl. We wanted to have dresses. And, you know, I mean, this is something foreign to me. I grew up with a brother. And so I got all excited and everything. And the first time she came home, and she didn't have a lot of hair, uh, somebody stuck a ribbon on her hair. And at first, you know, when you're a guy, you just look at it and say, well, that's kind of funny. I mean, she ain't got any hair. You stick a ribbon in her hair, you know, a big old ribbon, a little, little teeny wee little hair sticking up on the top, you know. Then I looked at it and I thought, that's kind of cute. And I kept looking at it and go, wow, she looks so pretty. I go, wow, that's precious. You know, she'd smile at me, big old ribbon on her head. And I thought, you know, when I think about precious, I, I think about those things. Uh, I think about wanting to love God so much, you know. That, that I'd go to sleep and I would say, oh Lord, oh Lord, please wake me up. When I wake up, be the first thing on my mind. I think that you can do that. You said that, that you would give me the desires of my heart and my desire is to open my eyes and think of you before I think of anything else. And I'd go to sleep and I'd be waiting. I'd go to sleep. I couldn't sleep, you know? <laughs> Sounds kind of crazy, huh? I wake up in the morning. Praise the Lord! All right, I did it! Praise God! Thank you, Jesus. I thought of you before I thought of anything. And, and that was precious. That was my early days when I wanted to love the Lord so much. I didn't know how to do it. Nobody asked me to come up and speak. Nobody was asking me to do anything. I was, I was just looking to serve God in the little things, you know, just to say, just to say, I love you. I have another breath. I told my wife once, I was praying to the Lord, and he said, what, what do you want? And I said, Lord, could you give me this request? I don't know if it's possible. I said, I've seen my 
my father die. I've seen my grand. You know, in the old days, they'd get sick, and you'd sit around there till they till they passed on. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of family members die. You know, at home and in the hospital. And I thought, Lord, when I die, would you give me the privilege of my last breath to be praise and glory to you, that I might enter the kingdom with with praise on my last breath. And I thought. At first I thought it was kind of selfish. Then I thought, maybe it's from the Lord. And then I told my wife, I said, however I pass on, if I have a heart attack, if I get in a car accident, and you see me struggling, if you're there, don't look for me to look at you. Don't look for me to, to be there. Because, because I'm trying with my last breath to praise God. I have a certain amount of time on this earth. And I want to serve the Lord. And when my last breath goes, I want it to be in service to God too. So I said, if you see that, please don't be hurt. Know that that's my desire and my hunger. So we made an agreement. And she said, okay, if that happens, I'll remember. And I won't be selfish. I'll, 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 I'll watch and I'll pray for you to be able to do that. I thought, well, that's, isn't that precious? That's sweet. That was from God. I know it was. You know what else is precious? First time my wife made dinner. <laughs> that was precious. <laughs> Tasted good too. Good thing to say while she's here, right? <laughs> she got everything fixed up. We went to the grocery store. I think we bought one potato. You know, you know, did all the dumb things. And then uh, she made. She, you know, I wanted to eat. <laughs> she started doing this and this and you know. Usually I, I would just follow and eat right after. You know, <laughs> get it all set. Everything's gone. Uh, it was precious when I think about that. I think about all the all the things that God has put on there. Nothing's more precious than His Word, and nothing's more precious than the fact that He died for your sins. And we're getting to that. But I wanted to show you what was on my heart as I started thinking of the things. How priceless! How precious is His unfailing love? You go shopping. Don't ever get between a mama and a kid. You know, you're downtown somewhere, and the little kid starts to wander off and get brave, and you're passing by, and there's the kid, and you don't realize the mama's over there, and you step between them, and all of a sudden the kid panics, and he's running between your legs and trying to get to mama, and, and that's happened to me before, and you almost stumble, and I think, I learned something here. Now as I walk and I see a little kid, I, I look to see where the parent is, and I go around the other way, because, because, because as soon as they hit something that you know, they're not sure of, they're going to run home. In a lot of ways, we kind of do that too. God gives us a little something to do and we jump out there real brave. <laughs> Sometimes we stay out there too long and we don't come back soon. Hear what he's got to say. I want to be like that little kid. Step out there because God told me to step out there. As soon as something happens, go back to the Father. You know, come to him as a child. A couple more precious things and then I'm going to get into what God has. My oldest son, Chuck. See, I did something. I did something really wise. I spent time with the kids. I shut off the TV and I spent time with them. A lot of time. And I didn't know that was wise at the time. In fact, it looked kind of dumb. Everybody wanted to go do something. You know, hey, come on, join us. And I go, I remember something my father said. He said, he said, will you remember this? He told me, he would tell me a few things and then, and then later they would grow, you know. He said, will you remember this? When the guys, after you're married, says, when the guys come over and they say, hey, let's go play pool or let's go do karate or let's go do this, let's go work on... When, when that happens and you look at your wife and say, honey, can I go? He says, remember this. She will say, sure you can go. <laughs> go have fun. He says, and you remember that she means no. Okay, what you say, she says no. And you look at her and you say, I choose to be with you. I married you. I didn't marry this guy. I married you because I want to be with you. I want to do things with you. I want to spend time with you. I want to show you what I learned. I want to come and cry with you. That's why I married you because I want to be with you. So why am I going to be hanging on with these people? To the point where one day I was angry. I said, I'm getting out of here. I can't stand it, man. This is it. I'm, it's all, I'm, I'm getting in the car. I'm getting out of here. And I jumped in the car. She jumped on the other side. I said, what's going on? She says, I'm running away with you. I said, you can't do that. She says, why not? I said, I don't know. 
And we started laughing. <laughs> you can't run away from her when she's with you. <laughs> Couldn't even remember why we were mad. My son, Chuck, when he was small, he wanted to be so responsible. He's still responsible. Helps run the church for all the time. He's the one open and closes. In fact, most people meet him before they ever meet me. And when they find out he's my son, they go, oh, you know, you're Chuck's dad. And they already knew him. He used to, he used to be really wanting to be responsible. And so I say, Chuck, we used to like to travel a lot. My dad liked to travel a lot. And I said, okay, Chuck. He's, I don't know. He's five years old, six years old, real small. I said, this is your responsibility. Boy, if you don't do this, you're in big time trouble. I said, when we go to the motel, everybody throws everything all over the place. When we leave, if we leave one thing in the motel, that's your problem. I mean, he's a little teeny wee kid, you know. <laughs> I think I'm talking to some executive, you know. I said, your job is to look everywhere for everything. And when I say, is this room empty? And you say, yes, boy, it better be empty, you know. It's tough stuff. He said, <laughs> I didn't think about how funny that was. So I think now. So he's playing and he's playing. We're getting everything packed and I'm watching him say, I know he's not going to do his job. I know, you know, God says if you get the silly stuff out of the way, you know, you get close to the kid. You know, we get all messed up. Throw the garbage out. And they don't throw the garbage. You yell and scream and everything. You never heard what God wanted you to do because you got caught up on the garbage can. Well, I'm watching him and I'm watching. He's not doing his job. He's not doing his job. Okay, I'm going to wait. I'll just, I'll give him patience. You know, a lot of faith. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. You know, like that. And so finally I said, all right, we're leaving. And Chuck gets up, starts going out, and I go, did you check under the bed? He goes, get under the bed and check under the bed. Man, I just knew it. I was so upset, you know, because there was nothing was going right. He looked under the bed. You see anything down there? He goes, yeah. I said, what? He says, a pair of shoes. I said, well, get them. Jeez. He goes, I can't, Dad. You're standing in them. <laughs> Is that precious? Talk about your anger just leaving. I just sat there and thought, man, he wants to, he wants to help so much. <laughs> my wife, my precious wife, what's precious? You know, you get married for a while, you don't do anything right. You've never done it before. My father used to say, if there's something you don't like in this household, he wasn't mad when he said it. He said, you change it in your house. That's what I did. His father was an alcoholic. He saw everything he didn't like. And he said, you know what? I can't change this, but when I get married, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to be no alcohol in my house. He didn't, he didn't want that. He didn't desire it. He saw the destruction. And he would tell me, he says, if you don't like that, when you get your house, you change it. You make a little note of it. This is how I think we're supposed to live. When you get your house, you do it how you want. And I'll come to your house and I'll respect it. Because he knew that was important. Well, as time goes on, you know, you know, uh, uh, Ron's going to learn to be a grandpa pretty soon. You know, he's he's a father-in-law now, but soon he'll learn to be a grandpa. And at first, when you first do things, you're not real good at it. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't think he's ever been a grandpa before. I don't think my father had ever been a grandpa before. And and they would see us doing things. And one day, my mother got bold and she called me over to the side. I, said, I don't like the way you're raising that kid. And in all my sincerity, when she said that to me, I stopped in my tracks and wisdom came out of my mouth. I said, wait a minute. You're talking to one half. You don't, you don't come tell me something's wrong to one half. Wait right there. I said, Patty, come here. She got next to me and said, we're a couple. Now what do you want to say? Because this is my wife and she will run my house and I'll do what we agree on, but I will hear you. So tell me what it is you want. And she said some things. She was a little upset. I said, we'll talk about it. We'll come back to you. But don't come to me alone anymore. I'm married. And it was wisdom because my wife had so much confidence. We went back and we talked. We liked some of the things they said and we didn't like some of the things they said. And when we came back to her, we said, this is what we decided to do. And she said, well, I think you're wrong. I said, well, I married her. So she's right right now. And if we fall, we fall together. And that was wisdom. And that was precious. Because never again did she approach us like that. She would call us together. She recognized us as a couple. She didn't come between our marriage. She, she caused us to think and grow and learn. But we did it together. 
but we didn't do everything right, and we weren't saved or anything. And I'm sure there are a lot of things that we're way off on, but we learn how to solve those, and that's precious. I wrote down some of the things that says, the message is truth. You know what God came? The world is so messed up nowadays. God came and told me I was a sinner. That's the truth. I come up short. We all come short of the glory of God. I was a sinner. And God showed me I was a sinner and I knew that I needed Him. You know what the new plan is? It's not my fault. Murdered that guy. It was my mom's fault. Ran over that person. It was the manufacturer's fault. You know? I slammed on the brakes. Somebody went through the windshield. It was the windshield company's fault. It's everybody's fault except me. And if it's not my fault and there's no sin, I don't need a redeemer. Have you, have you seen that between the lines? It's everybody's fault except the person who did it. You know? If there's no sin, you don't need a savior. If you think about that, that's a, that's a pretty masterful plan. I, uh, I brought my 1956 dictionary when America still thought straight. Before they rewrote everything, <laughs> they give everything away in 1956. They told you what they really thought, and now they kind of write around it. I looked up the word redeemer, and in 1956 it said Jesus Christ was your redeemer. I'll read it in a minute. Today's dictionary, they don't say that. It's been written out, <laughs> erased. They didn't know any better here. I mean, they, they just told you the truth. Let's take a look. I told you the story about when I first went to work that this lady came up to me and she heard me talk for a couple of minutes and she was the current high school district instructional materials librarian and she just said, you're going to need this, Sonny, and she shoved it in my face. She said, when you retire, you take it with you. <laughs> I've been hanging on to it all the time. I haven't retired. You know, I've just been hanging on to it all the time. It's so neat. Because maybe God gave that to me. Let's take a look. It's interesting because lots of times the truth is right in front of you. Redeemer. One who redeems. Specifically, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Webster's Dictionary, 1956. If you want to see it later, I'll show it to you. Go to your dictionary. I bet you that ain't there. Because things change. God doesn't change. Let's take a look at First uh, John 1, seven. I'm watching my time closely because I'd like to come back up. And Ron said, if you go over 30 minutes, he may not ask you to come back. <laughs> All right, First John 1, seven. First John 1, seven. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, with, with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You see, so the truth is that you're a sinner, and I'm a sinner. And the truth is that Jesus died for our sins. And that's good news. I didn't have to do anything. He already did that. All I have to do is accept it. All I have to do is say, wow, he did it. And I want to accept it. You know, everybody, you know, your religion is such a big mess because everybody's figured out how to get to God. And in the Bible, he wrote how to do it. <laughs> it's real simple. You say, I'm a sinner, and he forgives you. <laughs> and you say, come into my heart, and he does. I talk to people from different colleges and stuff, and it always amazes me when I see somebody come out of a college and, or a Christian college, kind of bothers me a little bit. And I'll say, have you ever led anybody to the Lord? And they go, no, well, why would I want to do that? I was learning. I thought, wow, I see people walk over to this room over here and learn all about God just because they led somebody to the Lord. And I, and I tell my children, be ready. I, I got a chance to speak to the college class a, a few weeks ago, and I said, be ready. Be ready to lead somebody to the Lord. You remember that. There's God. Bert Bacon showed me how to do that in the hand of my finger. And I always remembered it. And I showed the college class that. Because I, I never assume anything. I mean, if I'm talking to you and I say, okay, I'm going to counsel you good. Can, are you saved? And they go, what do you mean am I saved? And I go, that's the first question to ask. Because if you're not there, boy, we've got a long way to go. 
They might get insulted with me. I don't know. I just want to get the basics out of the way. You're saved? Okay, good. We're on, you know, we're on this road. You're not saved? Well, I know what I'm supposed to do. Well, what about my problem? <laughs> get saved. That's the first step. Lots of times we don't realize how simple that is. God might bring somebody to you. And maybe you don't have anybody else to take them to. And you might wind up having to bring them to the Lord. Romans is really neat. I led the college class to Romans. And I know they've read it many times. But, but that day they were afraid I was going to call them up and make them do something. So they were really checking it out. Praise God. Huh? In John fourteen six, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. You know, uh, we went to see the Royal Gorge. Did I say that right, Patty? In Colorado Springs. Ron wanted to make sure I saw that. And, and uh, so we went to look at it. And there's this big old gap. And so we shot some pictures and I came back. And I was talking to Pastor Hector and he said, You've seen the Royal Gorge? And I go, yeah, but I didn't know that was anything to see. You know, what I mean, you know, I never heard of it till I got there. Now I hear Christo, the guy with the umbrellas, he wants to do something. Anyway, Hector goes, I use that as an example all the time how how the best Olympic athlete can jump, but he can't make it across that gorge. How how everybody can try with the biggest might and can't make it across that gorge. It's kind of like trying to get to God. He says, You don't have a picture of the gorge, do you? And I go. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll get a picture for you. And he goes, wow, a living example. You know, and he gets all excited over his little picture. It's all kind of blurred, you know. And uh, I never thought about that. That's a great example. How can you get across that thing? You can't get across it. You need a bridge. It's like you can't get, come to God without a bridge. And the bridge is Jesus. And he dies for our sins. Takes your sins away. You get redeemed. He did it all. Sometimes we don't know that. The simplicity of that. There could be somebody here that, that didn't know that. Praise God. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Inheritance. Sometimes the inheritance is kind of lost. We get confused. Let's take a look at that. Okay? Let's go to Galatians 4 1. Galatians 4 1. It says, Now I say, as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from the slave, although he is the owner of everything. You could get a little confused. You see, I know there's a certain amount of time that's been given to me in my life and given to you in your life. How much of that time will be serving God? It might take a while to find him, but as soon as you find him, that time becomes real precious. You know, we're talking about precious. Precious is the time you have to serve God. It says, as long as an heir is a child. Please don't get me confused. You see, you're going to inherit the kingdom of God. But let's put it to you simple, and then we'll conclude this. As simple as this. You own a stable with a thousand horses, and your dad says, they're all yours. So you decide to go outside and set the barn on fire and see what the horses did. You don't have any wisdom to go with that. No, no, let's reverse it. You own a thousand horses and your dad says, go on out there to the hired hand and do what he says. Hey, but I'm the owner of everything. Go do what he says. What do you want me to do? Clean out the stable. Change the straw. And you go, I'm the owner of everything. I'm going to be cleaning up that stuff. So you're obedient and you do it. And then you take care of the horses and you water them and you feed them. And, and then one day you own everything, but now you have an idea of what that means. And you can serve well while you're learning, even though you're the heir of everything. You know what? Serve God. You're going to inherit the kingdom of God. Learn about the kingdom now. Go and clean out the stables. <laughs> Learn how to serve God in the little things. Throw your wallet up on the cooler. Cooler switch. Start there. He says if you're faithful in small things, He's going to give you bigger things. Well, you know what? I was faithful in small things. And this is where He wanted me this morning. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you are His most precious possession. Praise God. Look at the precious things that God has showed us this morning. You've got a certain amount of time to work it out in the stable. <laughs> and then come and, and see what, what part God will have you involved in. I end this this morning. There's so much more I wanted to say and do. 
He has a love for the saints to give thanks and wisdom and the knowledge of Him. But He told me to do something this morning and I'm going to be obedient to it. what? You were bought with a price. Don't forget that. (laughs) You're God's own possession and He loves you. I'm going to ask my son to come up. Come up with energy and and zeal. This is my youngest son, Scott. And this morning, Heather Baker called me and said, Hi, is Chuck there? And I said, Heather Baker, I need to know the words for this song. (laughs) Poor Heather. Had her singing to me on the telephone before breakfast. And that's a sense of humor because I can't sing. I have a terrible time. But my son, he can get the words. I want you to know something. I want you to sing this song with him. Son, if they don't sing with you, sing it anyway. And have excitement and zeal. And sing it unto the Lord. If you catch that, <laughs> join in. I'll sit for you. It's kind of an older song called I've Been Redeemed. I don't know if everybody remembers that. But uh, I sing a part and then you kind of sing along. And it goes... I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Filled with the Holy Ghost I am. All my sins are under the blood. I've been redeemed. I guess that's the older way of singing it. There's more to it. It talks about now Satan's mad and I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm covered by the blood. All right, let's go ahead and close. It sounded like a simple message this morning, but I know something went out there. Precious to you is the time that God has given you. Use it wisely. Don't know how to do it? Ask God. Lord, I'm so busy. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And my kid's in front of me. You know I've got to go make a living. You know I've got to do that. Lord, what is it that you want me to do? And he'll give you the time for those things. Then the last thing is, you know what Jesus did? You want to be an example? Do what He did. He'd go before the Father. And He would pray. And He'd be with God. And God's wisdom would come to Him. Let's take a look at that. And then we're done. Praise the Lord. Let's see if I can find it real quick here. Revelation. It says to be imitators of God. Walk by God. Let's see if I can find it. It's right in front of me somewhere. Mother, start praying because I think it's very important. I don't see it, but it's in front of me, so that's okay. You will see in most scriptures that Jesus went before God, before miracles happened, before he did things. He prayed. One, one verse that says he prayed all night, and then he went over and did what God said. Be like him. Be imitators of God. Be imitators of Jesus. If you don't spend time with your kids, they're never going to be anything. They're just going to grow up and not going to be anything like you. They're going to be whoever that is around them. If the, if the babysitter is wild and crazy, they'll be wild and crazy. Spend time with your kids and then look at that example and spend time with God. If you give Him your time, His revelation, His wisdom, His knowledge will be revealed to you. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank You for this day. I thank You, Lord, that, that You're here. I thank You, Lord, that, that You brought the people that You wanted to bring. And you told him.